And coming up today on Point After, we will go inside the boys lacrosse team, highlight the baseball and softball games from Friday night, and we have Dean Smith in the studio to talk baseball. That's all coming up today on April 7th, but first, Kristen Neal has today's announcements. Thanks, Elise. If you haven't heard already, prom is right around the corner. But if you haven't purchased your ticket, tickets, it is not too late to do so. You have until May 2nd, and you can purchase them online. But if you have any issues, you may speak with Mrs. Delano for further assistance. This year, we will have an actual Roberio Kart race in the Prosper Arena, similar to the famous Mario Kart. You will get to drive your remote control car in an actual race against other competitors. Collect coins and save Princess Peach. See Mr. Elias in room 1050 for details. The competition is this Saturday at 8.30 a.m. Please sign up as soon as possible. Space is very limited. That's all the announcements I have for today. Back to you, Elise. Thanks, Kristen. Lacrosse is the fastest growing sport in the United States. In fact, it is played in 600 colleges and 2,000 high schools nationwide. Lacrosse is also the fastest sport on two feet that combines speed, skill, agility, grace, and teamwork. Although some may think that hitting other people with sticks as hard as they can might be a safety issue, the NCAA ranked it the, top, the third top safest of all sports. Taylor Moore investigated more into the world of sport, uh, lacrosse. <laughs> I mean, it's grown really fast. You never really heard about it until like recently. A bunch of cities and schools are starting to pick it up a lot now, so everyone's, it's grown all over the place. Today, Texas is one of the largest developing areas of lacrosse in the country. And because Texas is so big, the Lone Star State's potential growth exceeds nearly every state. What used to be an East Coast sport is now transforming across the nation. Just more and more people are being recruited from the South and like our, where we live and like our region. It started like, it got big in the Northeast and it's just started coming down here. This fast paced sport has been around for centuries. Native Americans use this game as practice and training for battle. It's a really fast paced sport and that's what I like most about it. It's violent, it's physical. I mean, it definitely requires a lot of conditioning and running and stuff. It's, it's a lot of running. Just the running. It's so much running. According to the National Federation of State High School Associations, participation in the U.S. high school lacrosse grew 528 percent between 1990 and 2008 and it is continuing to grow rapidly. So no matter how much running the sport may bring, high school kids across the nation are picking up this sport. For Eagle Nation News, I'm Taylor Moore. This week on Instant Replay, we highlight the baseball and softball games this past Friday. Let's take a look. The Eagles took to the field at Heritage on Friday for their second game in three days, looking to go 6-1 and one in district, and they did just that. Prosper hadn't scored more than six runs in any of their past six district games, but scored a combined 21 runs in both the Frisco High and Heritage games. John Miergo pitched into the seventh inning after throwing 32 pitches in the first. After a 3-0 deficit heading into the third, the Eagles' bats got hot. Steel Walker hit his second home run in two games, and after the Coyotes shortened their deficit to one in the seventh, Prosper got some momentum from the Heritage pitcher. After three base hits and the bases loaded, the pitcher walked Blaine Moore, getting the run the easy way. Cole Hecht had a great game with four stolen bases in the game. After great pitching from Mirgo, Anthony Bernardes stepped in to close out the 11-8 win for the Eagles. Prosper stayed in first place tonight with the win and will host Centennial and Wakeland. Wins in both games would secure a playoff spot for the Eagles. Friday night, the stands were packed with future Lady Eagles for youth softball night as the softball team hosted Frisco Wakeland. The girls' bats were hot as they racked up runs against rival team Wakeland. Sophomore Tatum Moore dominated on the mound. As things started to fall the Eagles' way, the girls gained a big lead early on. The Eagles did their best to back up Tatum, but found Wakeland gaining momentum. The girls would battle back and forth all the way to the very last pitch, with the Lady Eagles pulling out the win 8-7. The girls had a total of nine hits. Offensive leaders were Taylor Moore, going three for four with two RBIs and two runs scored. 
Natalie Philotrot went one for three with a clutch hit, bringing in two runs. Hannah Smith going one for four with an RBI and a run scored. And Lauren Reinhardt with a walk and two RBIs. In bowling news, Kennedy Laughlin and Deshaun McKenzie both represented Prosper this weekend in College Station at the All-District Tournament. After some solid bowling by the girls' All-District team, they narrowly missed a repeat title by placing second behind the Central Texas team. The boys' team came out strong and was in the top seed after two of three qualifying games. The third game was a train wreck and they dropped from first to eighth, narrowly making it to the final match play. Coming back with a vengeance, the team threw 18 strikes in a row and swept over every other team in two games to secure their repeat title of All-District Champions. Kennedy and Deshaun were both instrumental in their team's win and will receive a scholarship awards for their part. Spring is in the air and the temperature is getting warmer, but dress code is still in effect. Here are some gentle reminders as to what is appropriate at school. DHS. As warmer weather approaches, we would like to remind everyone about appropriate dress code. Number one. Don't wear see-through clothing unless you have a dress code appropriate shirt underneath. Number two, your shirt should reach below the waistline. No one wants to see your belly, so put it away. Number three, your overgarments must cover your undergarments. That means cover up any bras or sports bras and especially underwear. Number four, frays and holes in your jeans are not allowed. They said no. Number five, only natural hair colors are allowed. That means don't dye your hair rainbow colors unless you were a unicorn or you were born with it. Number six, facial hair is not permitted. Even though teachers can have it, you can't. Sorry, ladies. Number seven, your shorts, dresses, and skirts must all be below fingertip length all the way around at all times. Your leg might be attractive, but school says no. Confiscated items will be returned to the student at the end of the day after $10 is paid. If after the last day of school, after five business days, the item has not been picked up, it becomes the property of Prosper High School. Remember that the school reserves the right to determine any article of clothing out of dress code or inappropriate. Remember there are no quick fixes. Please dress appropriately. Hi, I'm Tanner Argyle and I'm here with Dean Smith, close personal friend, triple threat, and heartthrob of the Prosper baseball team. Good to be How here. How are you doing, Dean? Doing pretty good. Is this season playing out as you thought it would in your head? Honestly, this season is going better than any of us expected. Um, we, we knew that we were going to be a strong team. Um, playoffs was a definite goal of ours, but um, as far as winning a district championship, um, I think that we were all, you know, thinking maybe third or fourth, but um, now that we find ourselves in first place, you know, after half of district play is already over, um, we've exceeded all, all of our expectations already, and we're really excited what the season has to offer. So how do you maintain that pace going into playoffs? Um, I think that um, we do it the same way we do every, every game. Um, we just take it game by game. Um, if pitchers can uh, keep on coming out and um, putting up these dominating performances like they have, they've uh, been doing, I think that we're going to see ourselves going a lot farther than last year. So would you say that uh, pitching is stronger or, or batting is stronger as um, an edge for this team? You know, I, I got to say the bats just because you know, we lost a lot of pitching last year. Um, losing Gilson was um, the biggest aspect. Um, we were able to fill in most roster spots as far as pitching goes, but um, last year, I think going into you know this point, we we're batting in the hundreds for uh, hitting, and um, we just weren't producing enough runs to help out our pitchers. So um, now that our bats are starting to pick up this year, um, you're seeing a little bit of the pressure lifted off um, the pitching staff, and um, people are able to relax and um, go out there and throw their game. So you're a senior this year. How do you want to end this season? for Prosper Baseball. How do you want to make your mark? State. All that right. was the goal. Well said. I'll take it back to Elise at the desk. Thanks, Tanner. I'm Elise Parker, and the point after is good.